Ooh, what is up guys, of course as always, welcome back to another course, LBA Wi-Fi Battle, which is for the course, the Skyrender and the Scandinavian Stovelands. And today we're going to begin the Shatoka Chestnut, or the Rudy, or the Green Scrafty. And he actually has a rain team on his own, which is, well, let's face it, quite intimidating. And yeah, I really needed to prep for something, something not usually what I do, which is basically predicting what I'm going to face and then try to check it. And uh, the thing is here with uh, Rudy's team is that his team is bulkier than mine and he has Kingra. Those two factors really, really stand out. And of course, Gathel didn't help. It's definitely a Pokemon that can bring a complete lockdown. Uh, so we see pretty much what I was presuming here, barring a one few mon that I actually thought think was going to make it over, let's say, Swallow. That said, though, we see Goth, we see Politoed, we see Altaria, the Megaform, Kingra, um, Amongeus, and of course, Swallow. So it definitely can lock me in here, if anything. I am bringing Spex Flaudius, uh, because it just kind of whittle out the team, and it was predictive for something like Conkeldra, for example, which definitely pressure my team car a lot. We have Lodicolo, Assault Vested Variant to be able to check any kind of Kingdra, hopefully. Rodan Watch was a physically offensive variant, basically made to check Kingdra if it's physical, and of course Gun Gelder. Scarf Gengar in case things get weird, and also a trick in case a Mongus is a switch in. Uh, we have a specially defensive uh, Swampers to be able to uh, take hits from uh, Grass Knot from um, the Gothafell, and of course um, any type of offensive pressure from Kingdra. And Lodios is a Calm mindset with, well, a lot of HP and a lot of speed, basically to outspeed possible Victini that he had on his team. So with really all this said, let's of course go into the match. Now from the get-go, I'm gonna lead off with Lodios as he leads off with Gaga. Now, that's alright. I'm gonna respect Moonblast 3 on it because it does do a significant amount of damage towards his whole team. As Amongus comes in, and we get the damage output already that this is an Assault Vesta because it should be a 3 at KO, it is not. So I'm gonna switch out to Azazel, my Gengar, and basically soak and hit when it throws at me. And since we know Assault Vesta can't spawn me, and I'm gonna go directly actually for um, a trick, hoping to snag his Assault Vesta. Luckily he just stay in here and goes for Payback, which was something I felt that it's a possibility that he would try to go for a seal damage and KO me in return. So with that in mind, we do get that play right, and we do pretty much destroy Among Us functionality quite a lot, as I can switch out freely to my Floria, since his Sludge Pump is, of course, um, Cursed Body or Disabled, as he's gonna start to drizzle with Politoed. Now, I do not fear Politoed, and the Moonblast will definitely give us a scouting damage that it's specially defensive, which is alright. Uh, but not only that, we do get some kind of supporting set with Toxic, most likely Encore, worst of the worst, even Perish song, as we are not able to hit kill it. I don't necessarily mind that, but need another hit on it to at least make it down the line where it can't switch in if I pull off Stealth Frogs. It does, unfortunately, survive that Moonblast and goes for Perish song. Now, I do not want to be locked in here with the possible Whirlpool and whatnot. I'm not going to take a gamble. I do not want to give the satisfaction to the Goth of the Elite. It'll be able to lock me in. So with that in mind, I'm going to bring in Befelgo as uh, he actually switched out directly to the Goth of the Elite. And this was surprising. Definitely didn't see this one coming as I will directly go for a Waterfall. I know I can take any hit from this, even if it's, it's offensive. A Grass not, it should not kill me unless it's Life Orb. And the damage I put here really shows me that this is an offensive one because I do way too much considering I have no investment and I barely survive the grass. Now, he definitely showed me that it's more than just offensive, has some kind of item. So with that in mind, I'm going to go for the very safe Stellar Frogs and sacking with Felgor, making him unable to set up the rain again, which means that I can start doing something I really, really didn't want to do, but this is seriously my best play, and that is start setting up Call Mine because we know it's offensive, which means his possible best setup move against me would be his own Call of Mind. Uh, we do not see that. He goes directly for the Shadow Ball, and it does a significant amount of damage. But the thing is here, there is no way that a Gavavel can win this matchup unless he scores a crit on me, because I can just keep setting up. Now, I need to be at plus four to really, really secure a win, uh, and I felt really, really douchey while doing this, as he actually scores a crit here on me. We barely survives it. And the range finally stops, which means that Kingdra is no longer a threat towards us. But that was the thing, though. With that in mind, I felt it was really, really dangerous for me to start recovering, mainly because 
well, let's face it, um, he could easily get a switch in here to Alteria. I'm not sure Alteria actually is KO'd from a plus 3 variant. Because I gotta keep setting up, but I really, really need to get myself in a good amount of HP. As I stated here, I do feel very, very douchey. I do not like setting up like this, as uh, we're gonna go for the third call mine. Then I stated, I really should have aimed for four, because like I said, this is something that would have ensured me to win. Um, I decided not to do that. I think I was well within range, and the worst comes to worst, I can wrap up with another mon, because let's face it, this is uh, this is just boring to watch, and quite frankly, playing a game like this, you really start to just feel, fuck it, let's forfeit, he's just gonna keep on setting up. I'm definitely gonna recover, because I needed that. But um, I do decide eventually to secure myself in a plus three environment and go for the possible sweep, or at least if I don't get a sweep, you know, the battle will be that much more exciting. So we're gonna go directly for Dragon Pulse. I was somewhere down the line, hoping he would switch into his Alteria. Uh, he doesn't do that, he sacks the Gaga, and that's alright with me, as his next switch in here is going to be the Among Us, and due to we getting rid of the Assault Vest, a Psychic is a guarantee KO this time around, there is no way in hell he's gonna take this, as I guess it was a bit unfortunate, I wasn't side shocked considering given the circumstance, then again, Psychic is the stronger stab. Now with that said, you know, the last Pokemon that can possibly survive a hit is the Cloud Chicken, the, <laughs> the Mega Alteria. And the role here was definitely, I do believe, in 40% chance of me KOing him with Psychic, since I am not fully invested, I'm far from it actually. So somewhere down the line here, I'm not gonna lie, I am very lucky to score the KO here, because I do believe a return would have knocked me out here, without a doubt. And if we went for Dragon Dance, it would have been pretty much the same. It would have meant that I would have been forced to play the Rodan card, which I definitely did not look forward to. But we don't get to do that, which is really, really good for us, because that means that we actually win this game 5-0. There is no way that Rudy can turn this one around. And quite frankly, as I stated here, I felt really douchey to get this situation going. But quite frankly, what I did to come here was basically ensure that his main place was not going to work which was the rain most certainly, which definitely benefiting him more than me due to King European faster than any mod of my Switch Swimmer. And I do find out lately here, or later, that he was actually C Splash Physical, which would have meant that my place would have roughly brought it to, I really can't stress this enough, to probably be forced to rely on Rodan Wash to be able to win this match. And luckily, we don't fall into that category, and quite frankly, I I'm happy about that, because that would have been really dangerous for us. But yeah, with that said, you know, this game really went my way. I really just can't take that away. I think had Rudo played more aggressively, this might pay off more in his favor. Specs Flordius most certainly put the pressure early on him. And getting the trick on the Among Us with Gengar really, really paid way for me being able to actually just set up with Latias. Uh, it, it definitely helped for me getting rocks up and getting that extra seal damage on the Politoe, which I definitely felt was a big risk since Polito was not resolving anything in that matchup. Going for the Perishong might have been pushing it, since it of course won't reset the rain. I do believe losing that opportunity and me getting up rocks to actually resolve that really, really just made that game a lot easier for me to win, but also a lot more easier for me to set up. Um, and that said, though, I had a lot of fun here, because I do get to showcase how the team functions when everything falls into place, which felt like a really weird and rare occurrence. So being able to pull something like this off, yeah, it's kind of cool. I, I won't deny it. I was really happy with this result. That said, though, I think, like I said, Rudy took a big risk here, and it didn't pay off, and that's why I win. Uh, I get the opportunity to set up, and he had no way of stopping it due to actually wasting the rain, which he definitely was benefiting much, much better off than I did. So I think that was a, a sad a misplay from his side. I think had he pulled that one out right, Kena would have been able to keep on pressuring me and eventually maybe even win. Who knows? I think there's a very big chance of it of pulling that off. Uh, so that's it, guys. Thank you guys all, of course, for watching. And yeah, have a good day. <laughs> I have no idea. Take care, guys. Bye.